from Denver, Colorado, it's theCUBE, covering Supercomputing 17, brought to you by Intel. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in Denver, Colorado at Supercomputing 17. I think it's the 20th year of the convention. 12,000 people, we've never been here before. It's pretty amazing, amazing keynote, really talking about space and really big, big, big computing projects. So, excited to be here and uh, we got our first guest of the day. He's Bernard uh, Freebie. He is the Senior Director of FPGA. I'll get that good by the end of the day. Software Solutions for Intel's Programmable Group. First off, welcome Bernard. Thank you, I'm uh, glad to be here. It's Absolutely. Wonderful. So, have you been to this, com this conference before? Yeah, a couple of times before. It's always a big event, always a big show for us and so, so I'm excited. Yeah. And and, and it's different too, because it's got a lot of academic uh, kind of influence as well, yes. as kind of you walk around the outside. So it's pretty hardcore. Yeah. yeah, it's wonderful, and you see a lot of innovation going on, and uh, we need to move faster, we need to move faster. Right. That's what it is, and that's to accelerate. <laughs> and that's what you're all about, acceleration. Right. So, Intel's making a lot of announcements really about acceleration at FPGA, for acceleration, and data centers, and big data, and all these great applications. So explain to us a little bit how that, that seed is evolving and what some of the recent announcements are all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, the world of computing must accelerate. I think we all agree on that. We all see uh, how that's uh, a, a key requirement and FPGAs are, are really a truly versatile multifunction accelerator. They accelerate so many workloads in uh, the high performance computing space, may it be financial genomics, oil and gas, data analytics, and the list goes, machine learning is a very big one, the list goes on and on. Right. And so, so we're investing heavily in providing solution which makes it much easier for, for our users to, uh, to develop and deploy FPGA in a high performance computing environment. Right, So because you guys are taking a lot of steps to kind of make the, the software programming of FPGAs a lot easier, so you don't have to be kind of a hardcore hardware engineer, so that you can open it up to a broader ecosystem and get a, a broader solution set, is that right? That's right, and you know, it's not just the hardware. You, how do you unlock the benefits of FPGA as a, as a versatile accelerator uh, through their parallelism, their ability to do real-time, low-latency acceleration of many different workloads, and how do you enable that in an environment which is truly dynamic and multifunction, like right. a data center, right? right? And so the product uh, we, we've recently announced is the acceleration stack for Xeon with FPGA, which enables that, uh, that use model. So what are the components of that, of that stack? So it starts with, with hardware. So we, we are uh, building a hardware accelerator cards. These are PCI Express uh, plug-in cards called programmable accelerator cards. We have integrated solution where you have a Xeon and an FPGA in package. But what's common is, is a software framework, a solution stack, which sits on top of, uh, of uh, these different hardware uh, implementation, which really makes it easy for a developer to develop an accelerator for a user to then deploy that accelerator and right. run it right. in their environment. And it also enables a data center operator to basically enable the FPGA like any other compute resources by integrating it into their orchestration framework. So multiple levels uh, taking care of uh, all, the, all those needs. So it's interesting because there's a lot of big trends that you guys are taking advantage of. Obviously we're at supercomputing, but big data, you know, streaming analytics is, is, is all the rage now, so more data faster, reading it in real time, pumping it into the database in real time. So the, and then and of course right around the corner we have IoT and Internet of Things and right. all these connected devices. So the demand for increased speed to mm -hmm. get that data in, get that data processed, get the analytics back out is only growing exponentially. That's right. And FPGAs, uh, due to their flexibility, have distinct advantages there. The traditional model is look aside or offload, where you know you have a processor and then you offload your task to uh, your accelerator. The FPGA with a flexible IOs and flexible core can actually run directly in the data path. So that's what we call inline uh, processing. And what that allows people to do is to whatever the the sources, may it be cameras, may it be storage, may it be through the network, through Ethernet, you can stream directly into the FPGA and do your acceleration as the data comes in, in a, in a streaming way. Right. And FPGAs provide really unique advantages there versus other types of accelerators. Uh, low latency, very high bandwidth, and they're flexible in a sense that our customers can build 
different interfaces, different connectivity around those FPGAs. So right. it's, it's really amazing how, how uh, versatile uh, the usage of FPGA has become. And it's pretty interesting because you're using all the benefits that come from hardware, you know, hardware-based solutions, right. which you just get a lot of benefits, right, when things are hardwired, with kind of a software component and enabling a, a broader ecosystem to write ready-made solutions and integrations to their existing, their existing solutions that they already have. So, right. great approach. Yeah, so the acceleration stack provides a consistent interface to the developer and the user of the FPGA. What that allows our ecosystem and our customers to do is to define these accelerators based on, on this framework and then they can easily migrate those between different hardware platforms, so we're building in a sort of a future-proofness of, of right, the solution, right. right? And the consistent interface is then allows our customers and partners to build their software stacks on top of it. Right. right? So their investment, once they do it and we say target our ARIA 10 uh, a programmable accelerator card can easily be leveraged and moved forward into the next generation Stratix 10 and beyond. So we enable really a, encourage a broad ecosystem to build solutions. And you'll see that here at the show, uh, many partners uh, now have demos and they show their solutions built on uh, Intel FPGA hardware and uh, the acceleration stack. Okay, so I'm going to put you on the spot. So these are announced. What's kind of the current state of the general availability? So we're sampling now on the cards. The acceleration stack is available. We deliver it to customers. A lot of it is open source, by the way, right? So it can uh, can already be uh, be downloaded from GitHub, right? And uh, the partners are developing uh, the solutions they're demonstrating today. The product will go into uh, volume production in the first half of next year. So we're very close. All right, very good. Well, Bernard, thanks for taking a few minutes to uh, stop by. Oh, Give us an a update. Pleasure. All right, thank you very much, He's Bernard. I'm Jeff. You're watching the Cube from Supercomputing 17. Thanks for watching.